Hello and welcome to episode 36 of the Chess.com Rapid Rating Climb series. My name is Alex, for those of you who are new to the channel, and this series is basically just about playing rapid games and me talking you through my thought process while we play, and then using the post-game analysis to kind of delve deeper into some of the ideas with help from the computer, and the fact that I can actually like make the moves on the board rather than drawing arrows and just saying what I think. This series has got some incredible support, so I just want to say thank you so much to those of you who are returning viewers. And for those of you who are new viewers, I'd really recommend watching some of the previous episodes in the playlist below because they're all very educational, I would like to think. Otherwise, I don't think people would be watching. Uh, so, anyway, without further ado, we are going to now search for a game. I've switched up from like having a game already uh, and then starting recording, and now I'd, I'll rather search for a game after I give my introduction. Because I was just leaking time at the start of the game. And we all know that time's a big problem for me. So, yeah, I feel like I'm giving myself more chances here. And we have a Vienna. We have a Vienna. And most people play Knight F6 going into the Vienna Gambit. We've had that in many previous episodes. But my opponent plays Knight C6, which I believe is just the Max Lang defense. We are going to go Bishop C4. I'm expecting knight to f6 here, yeah. So, bishop c5 is well known for being a bad move. Even though it looks like you're just copying white and everything should be good, this kind of loses, mm, loses is a strong word, but is massively countered by the move bishop, sorry, queen to g4, targeting the now weakened g7 pawn, because the bishop stepped off of it. This is a common idea in many openings, but typically, after like bishop c5, queen g4, you can get away with a move like knight to f6, and after queen takes g7, play rook g8, targeting the g2 pawn, the bishop's alive, and you've got some great compensation. That would work if f7 wasn't hanging, which in this case it is, so that, that line doesn't work for black. I'll show you what I mean in the post-game analysis, but um... Anyway, knight f6, d3 is the natural move here. Because black is potentially threatening to take, take and play d5 with a center fork trick. And the position is still probably good for black after takes, bishop f7, king f7, and knight takes back. Bishop takes f7 being kind of a desperado. Because after like d5, black is still in good stead. Um, he's got the bishop pair. You can argue his king is weak, but it's hard to actually exploit it without a light squared bishop. So d3 just means that if he tries to go for some shenanigans on e4, we just take back with the pawn. And, um, sorry, I'm going to have to be drinking water fairly often because for those of you that live in the UK, you'll know it's ridiculously hot at the moment. My European viewers may be like, bro, like 20 degrees isn't hot. To me, that's hot. Like, look how white my skin is. This is um, <laughs> very hot weather for the UK. So my opponent goes with the early knight a5, which attacks my bishop. I could drop my bishop back to b3 and go takes takes, give myself an open a file. But if I drop back to b3, he also doesn't have to take me yet. My bishop doesn't really have an escape. Some of you may be tempted to play a move like bishop to d5 to trade on these terms, but black can always play a move like c6, and again, your bishop is forced back, and you've only helped black to prepare d5 in the future. So, since the Vienna Gambit, sorry, this isn't the Vienna Gambit, it's always a Gambit, but this time it isn't, the Vienna Game. The Vienna Game is basically um, made to try and exert massive control over the d5 square and make it difficult for black to play d5. If I'm going to lose the bishop anyway, right, I think we can agree the bishop's gone, then how about I take back with the d-pawn? If I take back with the d-pawn, this is pretty nice. Now, I actually am not sure whether I allowed bishop to b4 here. Maybe there's a more accurate move than knight to f3. But we'll check that after the game. The reason I was worried about bishop to b4 is because it pins the knight. e4 is under attack. 
and if black takes then I'm going to triple my pawns which is not ideal but he doesn't do that thankfully and we'll see what the uh, computer says about that afterwards now we could castle we also don't have to castle we could go for bishop to g5 queen d3 and go queenside so the rook controls d5 and i'm pretty sure that's the point of this setup which makes this far less for threat as well because if black trades we don't care about doubling the pawns and getting an open g file if we're going to castle queenside anyway I think queen d3 or queen e2 I'm between at the moment. Queen e2 I kind of like because after castles my rook pins the pawn to the queen and his ideas of knight takes e5. But queen e2 means that bishop g4 comes with a potential pin. Queen d3 stops that pin but when I develop this bishop in castle that is probably not going to be a pin on this pawn. If bishop e7 is played defending the queen uh, so the queen has ample protection from a queen and rook battery i could start with bishop to g5 so if i go bishop e3 then knight g4 is annoying i could just go h3 and then neither of these moves are a problem anymore. I'm also preparing g4 if he goes kingside. So then I can play like queen e2, bishop e3 and castle. I actually quite like that. I don't think there's any rush here. And this move is stopping a lot of his ideas and preparing my own aggressive ideas later on in the game. Again, this might not be the most uh, accurate approach, we will see later, but I think it's quite a practical choice because it kind of stifles a lot of Black's counterplay and means that the plans that I want to implement are far easier to do so. So yeah, we're going to go Queen E2. Queen E2 also has the added benefit of just protecting the E4 and C4 pawns. Okay. Is he threatening this? I mean, e5 is going to hang. Once we castle queenside, it's going to be very difficult for him to make that move happen. I'm tempted to play bishop to g5 to just put pressure on the knight that's controlling d5. I mean, we have three defenders, he has three attackers, but also bear in mind e5 is under attack. And if we put a bishop on g5, then we can take at any point. I wasn't as big a fan of bishop e3, because after d5, there's ideas of um, forking. That's annoying, actually. I don't really want to take. Maybe I should just go back to e3. Maybe bishop e3 was the better move in the first place. I know h6. Well, we could argue h6 is bad. Ooh. Okay. We could argue h6 is a bad move because it might allow g4, g5. If he goes d5, we could also consider just castling. Okay, well, now we're obviously going to castle. We are now threatening knight takes e5. Yeah, that should be fine. The queen can't move anywhere with any meaningful attack so that pawn is under attack and the bishop also defends b6 which could be nice b5 i don't think is a viable move not least for the fact that this pawn is still hanging but we can probably just go and win a pawn or take with the queen and i don't believe in black's attack there our king can always evacuate back to the center if need be Okay, so queen a5, cool. Um, king b1 looks logical. Again, we're still controlling this b4, b5 break. Um, I just wanted to move the king along to defend a2. 
because I was worried this knight might get overloaded. Okay, so he goes a6, so he wants to play the move b5, which makes a lot of sense. Now, I would like to play g4, g5, I think. Let's do it. This is going to get spicy. Now, if he goes b5, he is kind of threatening b4. Because where is my knight going? Maybe a3 is good? I don't know, I'm not a massive fan of it. King a1, b4, knight b1. Looks very, very passive. Also, we have to worry about um, e4, actually. Again, this knight might be getting overloaded. Black's doing a good job. This might be a problem in the future as well. We might have to go a3 here. Hmm. I mean, obviously, if we take, that's bad. I mean, this has to be bad. You can't allow him to build up a battery like this. Could consider this move. The queen now defends e4, and we're threatening discoveries on the queen. But if we go bishop 2, d2, and then b4, my knight again doesn't have anywhere to go, which is a problem. b3 can't be played because the knight hangs b3 with the intention of b4 and knight a4, which would be great if the knight wasn't hanging. So a3 might be kind of the only option, unless I'm missing something. I think a3 is our best bet. Also gives the knight the a2 square if need be. I'm not a fan of it. We can always drop our bishop back to c1 as well. I said, I don't like it, but this is the nature of opposite side castling positions. Now, typically, typically, it's not a good idea to admit that your opponent's attack is stronger than your own by responding to a threat on the side of the board your opponent's attacking. But in this case, I don't think we have a choice. This move is kind of scary, I will admit, because c4 is under a lot of fire and again I don't want to take because I feel like we're just going to die so bishop to e6 I'm considering the move c5 take take That's not completely stupid. That's not completely stupid. Bishop e6, c5. Now, against bishop e6, we could also play knight to d2, by the way, just supporting everything in the position. So this can be met with knight takes, but still not a fan. Although we are looking at knight d2, knight b3, which would force the queen out of the position in some cases. And also just brings a defender over, so that could be good. But bishop e6, knight d2, takes, takes. Well, then the queen has to retreat. And... I feel like we're doing okay. Goes b4, alright. So obviously we have to take this. I don't see any other 
If we go here, then he takes. You could argue for the move B3 there to lock everything down. If we take and take, Knight A2 all the same. Queen moves somewhere. And then we always have bishop c1 as a defensive resource. In fact, we don't even need to go knight to a2 because rook b8 can be met of bishop c1. Actually, no, that hangs the knight because uh, there'll be a pin on the pawn. Okay, well, let's just take because we know we have to take it. Um... I feel like we should start with this move just to kick the queen off. This pawn is going to be a bit more of a liability. We could do something like this. This is in my mind as well. Again, trying to destabilize e5. But I don't think this is the right time to be opening up the center. Especially because my opponent has the two bishops. And uh, bishop b3 was going to come with more venom if we have c5, because this diagonal is going to be open. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Can we go for this? Yeah, but if g5, rook b8, bishop c1, I don't like that. Let's just go knight a2. Before he threatens mate, let's boot the queen and get the knight off of any queen takes c3 shenanigans. That seems like the logical choice. I know e4 is under fire, but for now black can't take it. We might follow that up with knight d2. I don't love it. If queen a5, we may play bishop d2. If he goes queen a4, it wouldn't be the stupidest thing ever to try and repeat. But I don't want to repeat. I want to win. And I feel like we're starting to put the fire out on the queen side. And our attack hasn't landed yet. So black hasn't yet proven whether he can defend it properly or not. So if we can defuse his attack and then launch our own, you know, that could win us the game. So he's making a decision. Now we are down to 6 minutes 30 as well. So I'm going to have to speed up a bit. Queen d3 is on the radar. To defend this pawn. But. I don't know whether I want to move my queen like that. It's an interesting move. Hmm. Okay, and I guess he just wants to do this. Bishops, I, I, I think bishop c1 makes a lot of sense. We're just defending this, opening up our queen's defense of e4. That can't be a bad move. This just looks a bit odd to me. Like, why is the queen on b7? I mean, I know why the queen's on b7, to exert pressure, but... I feel like we've defused his attack now, and we can start our own. c5 is still a move, because if he pushes or he takes, then e5 hangs, and if he doesn't do anything, d6 is under attack from two different pieces, and only defended by one. But, like I said, I don't really like opening up this diagonal at the current time. It might be wiser just to try and push on the king side, but if we go g5 and then takes and takes, 
he's got everything defended because his knight stands quite pretty on f6 defending the weak h7 square if i could play h5 and then g5 it would be glorious because after takes takes his knight's forced to move and we have the open h file for the rook and h7 is no longer defended because we control f6 but if we go h4 there's a good chance he can just take us I don't see any tactics that work because um, something like this, 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 he can obviously take back with the knight. Something like this, this, knight g5. I mean, the knight's defended by the bishop anyway, so there's no tactics regardless. Maybe we have to waste a move with like rook d to g1. Wow, so he voluntarily pushes. This feels very, very wrong. Insanely wrong. This isn't even a threat, because we're covering this square, and we can always push b3 if we need to. e5 is hanging. This looks so wrong. Okay, well, what happens if we take? If we take and he takes, and we take, and he takes, and we take, nothing like this works because we just take the knight and b2 is defended by our bishop. Knight c3 isn't a move. Knight b4. I don't, I'm not scared of it. And then g5's coming in. This feels very odd. Am I missing something? I think we have to take. I'm thinking about taking here with the knight, but I don't see what the knight's going to do from there. Maybe that's his idea? But can we not just move and then prepare g5? Could take. Now taking like this doesn't really work. Because after takes, the knight is under attack. And this pawn could cause some problems. Normally you want to open up lines around your enemy king. Around the enemy king. And he is doing that. But I also have two very healthy pawns defending. So, and he's running out of pawns to trade off with me. To force lines open with. I'm going to take, and I'm going to pray. Knight takes. Queen takes. Knight here. Take. Take. I'm not really scared, I don't think. Bishop f6 is coming. Maybe? Hmm. We could play this move. This doesn't work because we take back with the knight, which defends the queen. But then he can just do something like this, and we're just helping him can also win a pawn here. I mean, winning a pawn isn't that big a deal. Since it's opposite side castling anyway. I 
I think as long as our bishop defends b2, we should be good. I'm not sure what his plan is. I mean, we don't have any major threats, admittedly. You're always a low on time, which is just fantastic, as always. But I also don't think he has any big threats. Again, even if he pushes his pawn all the way down the board, which takes forever, um, we can always play b3. Okay, what about this? Oh, maybe he's intending bishop f6 now that I can't take the knight. That makes sense. So what about g5? g5 takes. I don't really want to take with the bishop, though. Knight takes, then here. That looks dangerous. Yeah, maybe his idea is just to go bishop f6. Can we go c3? I don't know. It weakens the light squares, though. Queen e4 looking for c4 to force a trade. <clears throat> that looks logical. That looks logical. Bishop f6, c4. We're also defending this knight. F5 isn't playable because his bishop hangs. So our queen's pretty safe. Again, knight c3, check, discovered attack on the queen. We just take back with the knight and defend the queen. Our bishop's always covering b2. He only has one attacker currently. We have two defenders. Um, so yeah, let's say rook a to b8, c4. I'm not threatening to win the queen, I'm just... Trying to trade. He, this doesn't work because again we can take our bishop's always covering. If um, rook b8, c4, bishop f6. Rook b8, c4, bishop f6. If we take, then I'm scared of bishop takes b2. C4, bishop f6. Is that a problem? Might be. Don't like this. I'm going to do it because I have this resource to defend b2. And then maybe I can force a trade of queens. Because remember, if I trade queens, I am a pawn up. c4 may hang at the end of the line and we may end up on equal material. But at this point, I don't think I can complain about that. <laughs> Something like this. Take. Take. Take, take. C4 may fall. I don't have to go into that exact line though. Mm -hmm. If I take this, I'm getting slaughtered, so. Oh my god! Wait. No, it doesn't work. There, there, there. We take the queen. I'm not going to lie, I was trying to draw an arrow. I didn't want to play it that quickly. It's very, very dangerous. But we might have enough defensive resources here. Credit to my opponent. Credit to my opponent. He's really, really causing me some issues. Um, oh, it's so hard to defend this. 
You know, an interesting move might be this. And then if take, sacking there. Whoa, what do we do if rook fc8? That's a really strong move. Okay, he doesn't do it. This is still an issue though. Do we sack the exchange? That might be the most logical thing to do. Rook takes. Okay, we have two minor pieces for a rook, but he has a big attack. Still. Oh, am I blundering this? No, we can take here. And then we're okay. Our knights aren't very good, though. Knights are not good. Rook here, how am I defending this? We need two. He's definitely calculating bishop takes b2, but um, we're at the very least, well, we're winning a queen, actually. Yeah, I, I'd love to play this, but then he takes it. I think that's losing, although it's a lovely tactic. Knight b4, queen b4, queen d5, bishop b2. Mm. No. Let's just try and defend for our lives. Was queen c2 better? Maybe. Maybe. Not sure where I'm putting my pieces to be honest. Yeah, this is a big problem. How am I defending? Damn, I missed that move. How am I defending? I don't have any moves. I really don't. <sighs> God. Again, my opponent's played incredibly well this game. He's really brought the heat. I can't take that. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. At the very least, I'm losing this knight, and then it's game over anyway, because he's up in exchange. Uh, what, a pawn? Uh, yeah, and he's got a massive attack still. Our piece, my knight on a2 just ended up out of the game. This rook didn't do a lot. This knight couldn't help. He's still got to convert this, but I, I have full faith he converts this. Full faith. Bishop d2 also stops our queen defending b2, which isn't great. <laughs> We're kind of just at his mercy at this point. This would be made if we weren't controlling the square, but we are. Yeah, there's just no real counterplay. We'll see what the engine says about this, and whether I add chances or not. But, I don't know. Really don't. My A2 knight just ended up completely out of the game. And my rook couldn't help with the defense of the pawn, nor could my other knight. 
yeah, it's very difficult. I think, like, I probably could get to 2,000 ELO if, um, like, on Rapid. Well, I have no doubt I could get 2,000 ELO if I wasn't trying to explain my moves because I'd be able to think a lot quicker because obviously I'm taking time out to explain variations that I've already calculated, right? And yes, I could just be quiet while I play the live game and then go into deeper analysis afterwards, but that's kind of boring, and I understand that. Which is one of the reasons that I don't really want to try and take this above 2000, because while my skill level, yeah, I probably can, that's if I'm playing silently. That's that's not useful to watch, nor is it fun to watch, because the point of this channel is to try and educate, not just to show off that I'm good at chess, right? That's not the point. So I think we'll still go for the 2000 ELO goal, even if it is going to be difficult. But um, when I restart the series, I would like to do it like from a lower ELO. So I can explain more of my moves. I can't take with the queen or the king because I lose my queen. I think this might be winning. I mean, everything is winning. <laughs> Let's be real. Let's be real. I'm trying to get him to take this and then move my queen and run my king over to the king side. Even then, his idea is a queen h1, so... I mean, I'm completely lost, but... I still have a knight. And I think... I think we've avoided checkmate somehow. Or am I speaking too soon? Probably speaking too soon. This knight's about to die. Rook e2, rook a1. <sighs> I'm gonna lose my queen if I run like this, so... I mean, I'm getting mated regardless. But we can make him work for it. Maybe he blunders something horrible and just hands me the game somehow. Plays some weird sacrifice. Oh, <laughs> I, I kind of forgot that um, my knight wasn't actually defending the b1 square. So that's just mating one. Rough, rough game. Mm. There's definitely a lot of mistakes in that, and that's what opposite side castling does. Like, it's so difficult. Um, by the way, shout out to D Practice. Uh, if you're watching this video, shout out to you for um, guessing two out of seven correct moves in the uh, little chat box. Uh, I didn't know I was that famous to have people watching my games, unless he's watching like from my opponent. I don't know, maybe. But, yeah, that's the game. If you've enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate if you could drop a like and subscribe. I know we lost, but <clears throat> I think it's going to be very educational, especially going over the analysis. So let's hop into that right now. All right, well, that wasn't a great game. We, we definitely did have a point at which we were a bit better, but... 67.8% accuracy, I am not happy with. I know it was a complicated game, but I made a lot of mistakes. My opponent with 80.1, so far better than myself. Credits my opponent again. Uh, but I mean, he made a bunch of mistakes too. Which, I mean, it makes sense for the type of opening, or, or the type of position anyway. And the thing is, uh, I'm not going to talk in massive detail. Oh no, I will actually just show you um, this here. 
classic center fork trick and sacrificing on f7 first isn't really good for white at all i used to play this with the black pieces actually and black is just better like significantly h3 is coming gonna kick the knight out e4 is potentially coming black king is actually quite safe and black's forces just absolutely barrel towards white so um anyway yeah I'm not really familiar in these positions. Um, I know knight f3 is a move. I think previously I have dropped my bishop back and gone for this kind of position and I've been more comfortable. But I thought the principled response was to go knight f3 and also just to try something a little bit more new, right? So it's a good position. Uh, h3 is a good move for the reasons I explained during the game. Bishop e7, queen e2 is good. c6, bishop g5. Bishop e3 is a bit better. Um, so maybe allowing h6 was bad because whilst this idea did exist, I never actually got to use it. Okay, castle, castle. And by the way, I 100% could have gone kingside. Like, I definitely could have done that. But I thought that g4, g5 posed a major threat to the black position. Maybe it did, and maybe I just misplayed the position, but maybe it didn't. Queen a5. King b1 is my first mistake of the game. So I don't have to worry about this, and I can just go g4, apparently. I mean, obviously, this exists, but it doesn't really work, so my king can always run if need be. I can just drop my knight back. Uh, queen a1. King d2. Queen's got a re not there. Queen's got a retreat. Obviously this is far easier to say in hindsight. I thought that king b1 could never be a bad move. But uh, yeah, I should just push g4. This isn't a major mistake though. a6 is apparently a bad move. Again, it's giving it a mistake, but it also likes the move. It prefers bishop e6, but it does like a6. g4 is not good. Bishop d2 is apparently better. Or a3. Queen e1. I didn't want to go queen e1 because I didn't want to trade queens here. Bishop d2 is apparently good. Setting up some discoveries. If the queen goes to b6, you could even try repeating potentially. But um, I guess that stops b5 from being played, so that's not good. If it goes to c7, again, preparing b5. g4 here is apparently all right. But okay, we get b5. And I should go b4. What? Oh, black can't take this because the queen gets trapped. Okay, but even if black doesn't take it, it's still scary. It's still a scary position because you can just win a pawn at least. This I don't think works because of this. And what black is up? How much material? A piece. So that's not good. So after b5, I need to play b3, which again, I mean, I understand it. It's just a weird move. Or a3. Again, a3 is like its second favorite choice, but it calls it a mistake. Strange, but okay. B4. Yeah, I I didn't I wasn't that scared of b4. I think I said during the game, you've got to take queen takes. Knight a2 is inaccurate. Bishop d2 is a move that I looked at, but I rejected. Queen b7. Wait, why did I reject this? Was it because of rook b8? I think it was, but I had knight b... Well, I had b3 for a start, but I also had knight b5. And I didn't see this move. Queen's under attack, and the rook's connection is cut off, so the queen can't take with mate. Queen a4. Mm, probably best I've got here is a repetition, you know. Although queen a3. Again, knight b5, though. And you can't take with a pawn because the queen hangs. And if you take with the rook, maintaining the pin on the pawn, obviously I just take it. 
So okay, I understand. Knight a2, not great. Queen b7 is actually the best move. So fair play to him for finding that. Bishop c1. Yeah, the computer wanted me to return to c3, but that's not very human to do that, to like admit your knight is misplaced, right? And d5 is a mistake, and d5 felt like a mistake. a5 is good. I assume rook b8 is good. d5 was weird. Takes, takes. Taking like this is bad. So, this is better. I did consider this, but I rejected it. I, I didn't want to do this because of bishop e6 stuff. And I felt like this was a potential problem. Hilariously, h4 is the computer's favorite move, going for g5. I guess black doesn't have an immediate threat. Taking back with the c-pawn though, knight takes d5, I should be taking here with the knight. Again, rook b8, bishop f6, it's still scary. Queen e4, bishop e6. <laughs> knight g6? Can't take because of take. And I'm attacking the bishop and the rook, and if bishop f6... No way I can do this. This is insane. I've got a sack. And what's the material count? Two rooks for a queen. <laughs> That's an awesome line. Wow. Um, yeah, taking with the queen isn't great. Bishop e6 is a mistake though. Because it allows knight d4. Now I did see this move. But I wasn't sure after bishop f6, queen e4. It just fell off. But I guess now I block this diagonal. And I might take this. If you play a move like rook b8. Again, if you go for this. The only move is knight c5. Attacking the queen so the bishop can't move. Queen b6. Queen b6 steps into this, so what about queen b5? Oh, apparently I'm just not getting mated. Ah, my knight can drop back to b3 to cover. Crazy knight dance. I'm just never going to see that, unfortunately. The position to me feels like... For a computer, this is good for white, because it can find the defensive resources. But as a human, this is categorically losing. Because whilst whilst technically I can save this, I'm never going to find the moves because I'm not a computer. And, you know, those lines that I just showed you, they're crazy. I'm not going to find that. You're not going to find that. So it's just one of them. One of them. I misplayed the position anyway. Um, is what it is. I'll see if I, I had any chances to save the game. So c4 is a blunder. I need to go knight d4. Attacking the bishop. Cutting off this diagonal. Knight b4. Wait, can't I just trade queen? Ah, I can't trade queens because of this first. So knight c3 to defend. <laughs> knight a2. I can't take because my queen hangs. And I can't take the queen because... Oops. And well, black's not of material, but he's about to be. I mean, this just looks horrible. Rook c5, looking at this. If the king ends up moving, then there's moves like bishop a3 to win my bishop. I'm probably going to end up down a piece. c4 is a blunder. And I was correct. Rook fc8 is the best move. And this is what I was really worried about, because I can't take the knight. Rook c1, king c1, queen b2 mate. You forcefully remove the defender of the b2 pawn. So I'd have to play rook h to e1, because I, I now can't take this. Bishop f6, got a sack. Do this. 
this. Although, 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 this does give me chances because if you take on d5, I'm good. So he does have to be very accurate here. Um, and potentially he misses this line because this is kind of a mental line. But, you know, it would have... I mean, here, uh, we are actually equal on material. So although I'm losing, it's not over. Because I'm positionally losing, but I'm not materially losing. So, yeah. I mean, he didn't go rook fc8 anyway. He went bishop f6. Here again, I need to play knight d4. Just blocking this diagonal. Why didn't I do this? I don't actually know. Because the best he's got, apparently, is to trade queens and then win c4. Well, I can go c5, knight c4. I can kind of save the pawn as well. This is, again, good for black. But, yeah, I had chances to save this. Rook d2, though. Again, I was trying to draw an arrow. I accidentally played this move. Would I have played it anyway? There's a good chance. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I lost because of a mouse slip. Although it was a mouse slip, there is a good chance I would have played rook d2 regardless. Um, but yeah, rook d2 is just bad. But rook f d8 is a miss. Hold on. So the best move is knight b6. Again, trading queens, but it seems very illogical. I know the black position is still very dominating, but it seems weird to be trading queens. Um... Which my opponent doesn't do, he goes rook fd8. And now I have the advantage if I find this. Because if the knight moves, rook takes d8 and I'm winning. Because I'm winning a queen. Whoops. Wow, so even here I had chances. But, yeah, I just took too quickly. Rook hd1. Yeah, and now I'm forcefully winning this knight because the knight's actually pinned to the rook. Because, like I said, you can't move the knight because I'm just going to take on d8 twice with check. The king can't go to h7 because my queen defends h7. And then I'm going to win your queen because this knight can't move in a way that defends the queen. Because it's this classic geometric, like, one diagonal square between them. Wow. But, yeah, low time. Low time. Uh, I took... And I thought, okay, I can at least uh, give him the exchange back. Sorry, not give him the exchange back. Go up two pieces for a rook. And I know his pieces are very active, but maybe I can defend myself. Spoiler alert, alert I cannot. This is the best move. Just giving a knight. Oh, come on, mouse. Giving up a knight and then going rook d1. I mean, now I'm just down a piece, and he has a massive attack. Or am I down the exchange? No, I'm down the exchange. Technically, this does defend the position. But, it's still losing. I played queen e2, because, quite honestly, I missed rook b5. I thought, okay, he's got three attackers, I've got three defenders... Uh, I can get this rook over here. I don't have time because I just missed the immediate rook b5. I got rook e1. Bishop takes. It's game over. Like, there's nothing I can do. My opponent converts well. Here I can't take with the king or the queen because rook b2 uh, will skewer my queen, which is why I took with the knight. Rook b2 all the same. King d1 wins the knight. Move my queen to e3 to try and give myself a way out, but it's over. Here I didn't go king e2 because he just trades everything and it's rook versus queen. Game over. I know it's completely losing, but I go rook e2 because in my mind I'm like, okay, if he goes rook a1, king c2, it's not quite game over. I mean, it is, but there's a chance he blunders. I just missed queen b1 was mate. I mean, I was it, it was game over anyway, but I missed this was mate. And yeah, boys, we are not doing very well, in all honesty. <laughs> like, we fought our way back a bit in that game. I hope it was still 
very educational regardless of the result and arguably arguably a loss can teach you teach you more than a win anyway because like we have to do a bit more in-depth analysis to figure out where i went wrong so again it sucks to lose it really does it hurts my ego but that's not the point of the channel like the point of the channel is to educate you guys and we did a recent poll on my community tab and the vast majority of you are rated somewhere between like 800 and 1400 so you know seeing two 1900 2000 players battle it out essentially regardless of the result i assume teaches you an awful lot at least i hope it does because otherwise i don't understand why people are watching the channel and for some reason people are watching the channel so again thank you very much if you made it to the end of the video you're the man and i'll see you in the next one where hopefully we can begin the redemption arc